Hi guys, this is Joe from JoeColantonio.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to test a web service using HP's Quick Test Professional with its web service add-in. For this example, I'm running the sample application that comes with HP's service test. So let's start QTP. And make sure you have the web services add-in selected. In your toolbar on the left-hand side, there should be something called Web Services Testing Wizard. Let's click on that. Basically what the web service wizard is going to do, it's going to walk you through pointing to a WSDL and then it's going to import all the operation slash methods that are associated with that WSDL um, and then it's going to throw in some, some code for you that you can use as a, as a basis for your, your testing. Point to the WSDL and select your operations. For this I'm using get flights and create flight order. And make sure you have the add XML checkpoint selected. As you can see it threw in some lines of code for you and what I'm going to do is just comment out the checkpoints for now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start setting values for the operations arguments. What QTP has done is that it's created an XML warehouse that holds the request information. To fill this out, you need to right click on the flight order details, click on the view edit XML structure, and expand the tree, and this will show you all the arguments needed for that operation. You just need to click on each one to fill out values that you want to pass to it. Okay, now for this example, I'm hard coding all the values. But later on, I'm going to show you how to uh, create a dynamic value by I'm going to grab the get flights response information, grab the flight number that's returned, and then I'm going to use that as input for this flight number value. And let's just run it to make sure everything's running correctly. And let's look at the results. Cool, looks like it didn't fail. So if we expand the information and click on each operation, we'll be able to see the request that was sent to the service operation and what the response was passed back. So basically this is what we passed and it returned a, basically a list of all flights that are available that match the criteria that we passed. And for the create flight order, see the values we passed. This passed also, there's no SOAP fault, has an order number and a total price of 125. So what I'd like to do next is I'd like to get the flight number that's being returned from the get flights and use it as input for the create flight order flight number argument. But in order to do that, we need to be able to get the node flight number that's being returned and grab that text value. Unfortunately, in QTP, there's no easy way of doing that. What you need to do is pretty much create, create your own function that allows you to do this. So what I've done beforehand is I've created a function. And the function uses this Microsoft XML DOM. And that's basically a way that allows you to access and manipulate XML. So to use the function, we're going to call it get node. We're going to pass it an XML string, and basically this get flights variable is what's holding the response, and the response back from a web service is, is basically just XML. So we're going to pass it get flights, and the no name is flight number. So I'm just going to put in a message box that returns the value just to verify that the function is working correctly. Great, it's returning a value, 13628. So now what we need to do, we need to print this value somewhere so we can then point the create flight order flight number argument to it. So I'm going to use the data table. I'm going to create a column called flight number and I'm going to populate the cell with the flight number that's being returned. Great, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the flight order details again, the XML. I'm going to navigate to the flight number, point on the value, and so rather than hard code it, I'm going to click on the parameterization button. I'm going to click on parameter, select data table, and I'm going to enter in flight number. So basically what's going to happen is the get flights is going to run. I'm going to call my get node XML. It's going to grab the flight number element, return me the text of 13628. It's going to write the value out to the flight number cell. The create flight order web service runs. It's going to point to this XML structure. And it's going to point, this argument flight number is pointing to the flight number data sheet. And it's going to contain that value. So let's run it and make sure it's running correctly. All right, great. So now if you look at the request made, by the create flight order. See it has a value of 13628 even though we're no longer hard coding it. It's grabbing it from the get flights, returning a value of 125 and the order number of 12. Awesome. So the final thing we want to do is we want to create checkpoints that validate the responses being returned from the operations. So we're going to use the checkpoints that were created for us by Quick Test Professional to populate the checkpoints, you need to run the update run mode. So it'll update the information that's going to be captured. So let's run it in update mode. 
Make sure you have update checkpoints and output value properties. Click OK. Once that's done, go to the first checkpoint for get flights. Let's click on right click on get flights and click on checkpoint properties. So basically you're going to tell QTP what you want to validate. And we're just going to validate basically that these values do appear. Now let's go to the create flight order checkpoint. And because this order number is dynamic, uh, I don't want to capture it right now. But I do want to capture the total price and verify that the value is 125. So let's run it. Awesome, it passed. And if we look at the results, we can look at the checkpoints succeeded. See, so it has the flight number 13628 and the crate flight order succeeded. Everything looks good. So that's how you test a web service using QTP with the web service app.